What is up down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? Welcome to another repi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you guys. And it's been a minute since we did a little off-season roundup. A couple big tasty ones to talk about. Some smaller ones over in the LTA. But if you are craving, hankering for a little dose of nostalgia, then I direct you to the rumored Invictus Gaming lineup for 2025 because not only is it with their OG organization, but we're getting Rookie and the Shy playing together again. Oh, dial it back up, baby. We're going all the way to 2018 and running it back for IG, the Shy Rookie return to the organization that they won a world championship with and... They bring in some reinforcements to the rest of this Invictus Gaming lineup. JJ going to be the rumored uh, jungler and Gala down Ooh. in the bottom lane, bringing some extra firepower. Just a little bit of some question marks, a little bit of some concerns that we'll get to about the support position. But overall, this is instantly one of the top teams to watch in the LPL. And yes, it's not 2018. Rookie and the Shy are maybe not the de facto premier solo laners on the entire planet. Rookie has been a little inconsistent as of late. The Shy obviously took the whole year off, so who knows what form this dude is going to be in. But honestly, JJ and Gala, current form, are probably the two best guys coming into this lineup. I know JJ we've kind of forgotten about since EDG has been irrelevant for the last year two years but even on a terrible at times edg squad he was still the standout player hong is coming over with some built-in synergy with gala potentially and even wink since he role swapped uh to support has been more than serviceable in that so we obviously don't know who the starters are going to be but yeah aside from blg which sounds like it's running back the same starting five obviously they'll be the huge favorites outside of that I feel like the rest of the LPL is pretty open. There's a, a bit of a power vacuum left outside of BLG being at the top. And even BLG, as we know, is not untouchable at the top in the LPL from some of these teams that can compete in that elite type of tier. Invictus Gaming with this resurgence, with this rebrand, you know, rebringing in of these iconic players with those reinforcements i think that we're going to have one of these teams that can be in that type of conversation you're going to be looking at top esports lng what's happening there all sorts of still jdg even still questions on some of these teams that hang in that power area of the lpl but i think there should be no question for what has been assembled on this Invict invictus gaming roster is going to be a serious uh, competitive threat within the lpl this year and obviously one of the most iconic teams is going to build up a whole lot of fans to have, first and foremost, again, the Rookie and the Shy being reunited. Uh, but Rookie, I feel like, you know, on the top esports V5 eras that we've had over the last little while, you've seen moments where there's that old MVP level Rookie. You've seen moments where he's maybe been a bit of a liability for his squad. This is now, I think, the best opportunity he's had in a while to be you know, surrounded by what should be a solid squad so we can really see if this guy has still got it a decade into his career. I think when you go through the last couple of years for someone like Rookie and you examine it against what is that, you know, perceived expectation, the nostalgia of everything that we know and, uh, you know, love about him throughout his career, you see the individual performance, the way that he is carrying through for these teams it still lines up. It is still that prime form rookie that we always talk about, we love and, and reminisce about when we look at that 2018 IG roster. But it's a different era now. It's a different time in the game of League of Legends. And my concern, my question is looking at the new champions, 200 years. This is something that we talked about and kind of went through with Faker to a little bit earlier this year, looking at that champion pool and wanting that new mastery, that new uh, showcase of what makes you exceptional on these new champions to take it to that next level with what is possible in the game for someone like rookie it was a little bit of a rough outing you're looking at you know yone way these were some of the more recent champions that he was playing and definitely below uh you know below 50 below 40 percent win rates on these ones last year were, were the rates to look at so that's something i want to see worked on improved to show out next year because again I don't think it, it, you know, the game doesn't care about what you are good at, what you're stuck in, all these type of things in time. 
it keeps on moving. It keeps on evolving. And I don't think any of us expect the game to slow down in 2025. And I think they're you know, will be a bit of a buff for both him and the Shy playing together again. You saw when they've lined up opposite each other, they're always exchanging words, exchanging smack talk, and we know that these two get along really well. So excited to see them back in again. Obviously, this is going to boost the IG uh, fan base as they've been kind of irrelevant for a few years, but clearly decided this offseason they wanted to spend a little bit of cash. A sleeping giant in the LPL has how it's always felt for IG. And it's been kind of a, a shame that they started more or less this explosion of League of Legends in the region, uh, getting that world championship, beating Fnatic, and then kind of the explosion that League of Legends took off and the popularity and all these other teams in the LPL jumping up into that top tier. IG got left behind in this situation. So it will be a, a fun refresher to have them be involved at that top tier action once again. And again, remember, fans of the Shy, probably second only to Faker in terms of how many fans of him there are. So yeah, expecting a large boost there. Uh, over to the LTA, which yes, yeah, still when I see headlines for the LTA, I'm thinking, what team is LTA? Oh, that's the LCS Americas heading into next year. But the latest uh, kids that joined the squad was, of course, DSG Disguise Squad. We have a pretty good look at what this team is going to be now. So far, we're looking at Castle in the top lane, XU in the jungle, Abadage coming in for mid lane, and the latest was Huhi coming into support. Obviously, Huhi had a bit of a down year last year. We were expecting more out of that NRG lineup. He didn't deliver, but we've seen the ebbs and flows of Huhi over his career. There's no reason to believe he can't get back to that level with a team uh, that's a mix of young and new. Still excited to see him back. I think that this is about as good as it could get for Disguised Toast because we obviously knew heading into this one they're going to be on a different playing field type of level as far as finances, what they were going to compete, the, ba the balance of the budget and how that was going to equal out to the competitive level of this roster. I think they hit a lot of home runs because you had to deal with obviously the strengths that you had, but to get guys that I think are going to look at this as that opportunity to prove themselves, whether that's proving themselves for the first time in their career or proving it once again, that is the opportunity that's going to be here with the disguised roster. Who he, he fits right into that opportunity. I think a lot of people uh, have, you know, shifted towards more so in the negative camp in the last year or so, but you still can look at positive results, positive statistics, Back with FBI, back on those 100 Thieves, the early parts of that NRG success that they had. Kuhi was a big part of that in the way that he is able to play make for his team. I think that's what you're betting on, on, on some return of that form. And still a guy who, you know, love to use terms like just team vibes. He's such a nice guy. We've seen him be a great teammate on multiple iterations of different rosters. It's always a plus to add somebody like that. And... Then you look at the upstart younger guys, XU and Castle. Castle was the bright spot in uh, abysmal or accustomed to dark era for Immortals. But this guy was getting all pro votes in the spring split. Had some nice solo kills. Excited to see more growth out of him. And now post Dignitas Spica experiment, we can safely say most people were right saying XU probably shouldn't have even been replaced. Yes, yeah, I'll take the L on that one. I, I had the nostalgia for my boy Speaker back there backing him up, but the, the results speak for themselves and say that you wanted XU. That's who you wanted in this position, and I think a lot of people are very excited to see him get this opportunity. It's going to be, you know, uh, one heck of a journey for him because he's going to go from having pretty much all of the community behind him saying, yeah, this is a guy who got done wrong in this situation. Let's, you know, cheer him up and all these type of things to now – He's going to be under that scrutiny of being in one of these starting positions in the LTA. The thing that I'm looking forward to with him is going to be about developing that synergy with Abadage. I think both of them, the way that they play, I think that play style can mesh together. I want to see that one uh, develop uh, you know, on and off the riff. I think that's going to be the big one for me with Disguise is whether you can get that mid-jungle synergy rolling early in the year. And listen, Abadage, another guy on this team looking to reprove himself it's been a long time since he's been a starter in one of these major regions yes the lta is still technically a major region uh but he's gone through the erls he's gone through that tier two system and climbed his way back up which 
as we know, is a true testament to someone's work ethic to be able to go down, slip into the cracks, and be able to come back. And I think he's got a lot to prove himself. And I think a lot of people are undervaluing him because of that journey, right? Because you did, you're did, you used to seeing him in the bright lights on that big stage of the LCS, of the LEC, that when it steps away for any period of time, even if you're you know being pretty you know responsible, pretty diligent and checking in on these type of things, it still doesn't hit quite the same. So for Abadage, very excited for him to get this type of prove me opportunity that he can still contribute at what is a major region level. And for a team like the Sky's Toast that's looking to punch above what their budget, what their weight class is in the situation here in the LTA. Hanging out in the other mid-region zone of LTA North. We're seeing this new look Dignitas, who we mentioned, speak of probably not returning. We don't know what the jungle situation or support is going to be yet, but the three guys we probably know will be starters are SRTTY. Surti getting that promotion that we've been waiting for, the solo Q King in that top side, last with FlyQuest Challengers. Tomo, who we know saved 100 Thieves season, and I might still even value higher than FBI right now, makes his return to Dignitas. And then the guy who helped annihilate and eliminate 100 Thieves. They saw Kaini on Rainbow 7 with the Submarine Oriana comp, and they just said, yeah, we'll, we'll take him. You ruined the LCS's dreams. We'll take you on the squad pretty hyped about getting Kainy into one of these opportunities, one of these roles. This is kind of going to be the new path that we're going to be seeing for some of these organizations with the integration of the LTA and everything else being a little bit more open to these opportunities. Kainy getting his chance. He's going to get to show us exactly how good his LeBlanc can be on the LTA stage this time. Can't wait for that one. And I think SRTTY is one that a lot of people they're not, they're gonna say can't wait i've been waiting forever for this yeah. one for him to finally get one of these opportunities we know things you know fell through evil geniuses all that you know situation beforehand and everything else but this is certainly a young talented player that we have seen develop through the scene that is deserving of one of these starting opportunities and i am just hoping i'm just hoping we hit the ground running with him because he has got so much talent and i want that hype that everyone is carrying in from being excited about him getting this opportunity to keep rolling on through the rest of the year and listen, you throw him in with Sniper going into his second year, Thanatos his second year with Cloud9, Castle, who we just mentioned, top lane is low-key, become one of the most hype roles in the LTA, especially for these younger guys looking to continue to grow. These younger guys, and let me throw in, the old dogs are still hanging around in the LTA. We're going to have Fudge Impact. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> And Buepo, you better believe that there is an old guard, an established veteran presence in that top lane as well, where, yes, there is incredibly exciting and, you know, energizing young talent in that top lane for the LTA teams like you laid out. There's also these veterans looking to knock you down, looking to dish, dish out some, some cold and bad tasting lessons to you uh, on stage. And I am thrilled that we are adding SRTTY into that group. So both of these uh, alleged rosters we're looking at, obviously with Team Liquid and FlyQuest returning with the same starting five, they're going to be the two big favorites uh, to come through these first few splits, at least in the LTA. Dig and DSG looking more like 5-6, middle of the pack kind of situations, but... It's a new format, new region, no other team. It's impossible to predict how this year is actually going to play out. There's so many unknowns. There's so many things that you just simply can't, you know, relate back to old data or anything else like that. That You just got to see it play out that you can't. You have these question marks about the LTA. I think the exciting thing is having those two top teams, those forerunners in Team Liquid and FlyQuest returning with those lineups. And yes, the things that have happened beneath them, 100 Thieves included in that one, disguised, you know, as we went through Dignitas, they are interesting enough angles where you can see them play out. There is an unknown certainty, unknown qualification in LTA. We're going to find out. You better believe that one, folks. And I think what's most important is just doing something with the roster that fans can get excited about. Having something that you can back behind and have a reason to root for a team. And both of these squads, on a budget... I think did a pretty good job at that. 
there's a lot of things that you might be able to label on to both of these teams, but I think at the end of the day, nobody is going to label on boring to both of these options because of the stories that you can create through either the prove me budgeted run, you know, content creator disguised toes team that we're rolling through, whether that's going to be Dignitas with some fresh young talent, bringing in LTA involving all these type of things. There's a lot of things to be excited about as we look into the unknown future of the LTA in 2025. And let's be honest, you slap a boring tag. That's the killer of entire organizations if you get that. So good dodge out of them. Obviously, once these are full, fully finalized, we'll be doing full power rankings for all these major regions. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.